What's going on YouTube? It's Bicycle Lewis here and welcome back to the channel with episode three of writing a book from start to finish. Today I got some great news. So as you can see, I just finished chapter two. I'm at about 8,000 words. That's my pace in the book right now. And these are my goals. I personally learned from a mistake that I wrote with my first book. I was doing, I was doing, I paid attention way too much to word count. So I accidentally, or not say, not sort of say accidentally, but I, I mismanaged my story because I was so worried about word count. So this is a tip that I would like to give you guys. When you're writing a book, just make sure you write the story out. You get all on paper, you write until you are satisfied. Don't worry about the word count. However, there, there should be a goal in mind as far as the maximum limit that you need or the minimum uh, required for a publisher to actually take notice to your book. So like I said, in the sci-fi genre, um, there is a, the word count minimum is a bit between 80,000 at the, at the smallest, at the least. And you're talking about 100,000, 100,000 to 120,000 more words as far as for a science fiction book. Now, pacing. So how am I pacing my book? Because this could be a little difficult because I, I can tend, some people when they're writing it, they tend to want to jump straight to the point. However, this is not the case when you're writing a book. You want to make sure that you are building your world, you are building your characters, you're developing the story as you go along. So you have to make sure you're actually paying attention to close detail, as hard as it is, and I know it, as a writer, you get excited and you want to write more. You want to get to the point. You have to make sure that you are giving the readers time to digest all this information that you're throwing at them. So, and the best way to do that is to make sure you are controlling the pace of your book. And I'm going to tell you how you can do that. So for instance, one of the rules that I use, it's a general rule that I use. If I introduce something or idea or maybe, or even maybe a specific uh, technology in my books, I'm going to take some time and actually show people readers how that character is interacting with it what is how it works what it does what is it for if it has a purpose or why even mention in the first place you only want to mention things and explain things that has some type of value in your story if it has no value if it brings nothing to your story you can just disregard it throw it in the trash can because you don't want to waste readers time you want to stick to the script and make sure you are getting your points across effectively because you got to remember the main rule is if you confuse, you lose. And that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to lose our audience. Now, as far as pacing goes, if you're going to introduce your, your main character should be, this is a little bit difficult because with your main character, this person is going to be versatile. And you also want this person to relate to the, to the world, to anybody who reading your story, do you want them to relate to this character as well? You as the writer should be able to relate to your main character because that's important because if you don't relate, then how do you expect anybody else will? So you want to make sure you are writing a relatable character who's facing real world challenges and decisions that are going to reflect how they develop as a character. So for instance, if you have a character who has to solve equations and solve mathematical problems and arithmetics, you got to make sure if this person's struggling with, if does this person struggle with math? Are they excellent? Do they excel in math? Why don't you just plain out suck at it? How are they going to go around that obstacle of completing this task? And that's going to be the ultimate challenge that you want to build your story around. And for instance, that's called plot. That's building your stories from the plot and how I like to do it. If I'm going to put up this diagram. So what you want to do is you want to start with your, with your plot and you want to build up to your next plot. And then you want to keep building. So that way it, at the end of the day, everything should connect, make a nice little triangle. So it just comes back 360, but just in the form of a triangle in my diagram. So make sure you're developing your main characters and make sure you're pacing the story. So that way the readers can understand and digest the information that is going on in their world. Just know that if you are writing a story and you are finished and you're like me, where you're on chapters one and chapter two, and you're making your introduction, one thing that I have learned is, is to put a slight introduction, a, a slight introduction to the story at the beginning of the chapter or at the beginning of the story. So that way you can ground readers. And this is a hint, guys. You make you know you want to be able to ground your readers. And when I say ground your readers, you can put up an excerpt in there that, that states what's going on. What is the climate of the world, the political climate, the how, how is the world moving as far as 
certain changes uh, is has there been a climatic change that causes the the global climate to to be extremely harsh the global climate to become extremely harsh or is there a is there a martial law into effect and people aren't able to go outside at past a certain point or they're going to be risks of getting getting killed or, or worse um raped or kidnapped or how, how is the climate around in your story so providing these excerpts can help your readers know what's going on in this world so if you're a person you're you got a character walking outside past curfew then that automatically puts readers into a situation where they know this person could be in trouble if they get caught walking around so just make sure you're pacing your story and you're taking times to spend on the details pay close attention to details paying close attention to detail brings me back to word count so if you're going to be watching your word count make sure it's only for a specific and minimum required amount of word and like i said you have to go back and do your research to know what your minimum word count is going to be in your genre um if we're either going to be writing short story fan fiction non-fiction fantasy thriller crime you got to make sure you know what's out there um go you like writing crime novels crime novels and thrillers go check out some james patterson books because he splashed it all over the all over that section in barnes and nobles so go check that out because that's that'll put you on a good narrow path to know where you need to go as far as your word count so as you write don't worry about the word count just write until you're satisfied by doing that you're ensure that if you do need to come back and you need to slice out some words it's fine you'll still meet your minimum word count at around eight to nine thousand i don't know what crime novels mm, those are usually the higher end like i know you've seen the dick tracy book nobody's writing a, a dick tracy book that's really long anymore nobody has time to read books that long and nowadays even though despite i'm reading a book called the wanderers which is pretty long but i am determined to finish it because like i said it's always on my shelf and as i write i get ideas i get inspiration i get inspired and it helps me complete my story to show people or agents exactly what i have to offer especially when i'm writing my offer letters or or my representation letters and i'm saying hey Look at this book, Chuck Wendick. He's basically New York's bestsellers list. And this is, I read his book and I got my inspiration from this guy or, or Makai Johnson's The Space In Between Worlds. I got my inspiration from this guy. So make sure that's what you are doing as far as you're getting the inspiration. And you're learning what fits. You want to be published. That's the ultimate goal. So do that. And what a long word count and pacing comes the aha moment. So you want at some point in your book there will be an aha moment and it's either going to go one or two ways as a reader the reader's going to say hmm i knew that was coming or oh that was a surprise that's that's the aha moment i'm talking about so you make you want to make sure you are delivering that and you're executing that well and the only way to do that is simply by your pace you got to pace the book don't rush information to the reader let them slowly develop an understanding because you, we have to trust our readers that they're going to understand and understand what's going on with the plot as it unfolds. Keep in mind, you just want to make sure you're pacing your book and you're pacing your story. So that way you're allowing everything to develop the surroundings, the place your character works, uh, what they like to eat, the smells. You want to deliver all these sensory informations to your readers through text. And it's not as hard as you, as it sounds, but it can be done because obviously people read books and people know for a fact that when you're reading the books and if I say the little green notebook with the black ribbon in it, you're going to automatically pop into your head. You're going to like, hmm, it's going to it's going to come into your head as as you can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it, because at some point in time, you're going to touch a green notebook or something similar to it that makes total like so much sense. So just remember delivering these words through text and you're using these great adverbs. Which takes me on to my next subject, the use of strong adverbs. You want to make sure that you are using your adverbs firmly and correctly. Strong adverbs can make and break your story. So when you're using these words strongly, creativity, unusually, ambitiously, you, may, you, want, you want to make sure that they are delivering the statement. They're delivering your story along with whatever's going on in the situation. So using these adverbs can absolutely make or break your story, but you got to be careful because you don't want to overuse your adverbs. Overusing adverbs can cause your readers to become numb to them and you don't want that to happen. 
So when you use them, you want to say, oh, you want to immediately grab their attention. Like, oh, something's going on. Something's about to happen. So whether it's going to be an impactful scene or the scene that, that you want your readers to remember from your book, make sure you're delivering them strongly and uniquely. So that way you can separate your book and distinguish it from others. So another thing that I, as I've been reading, as I've been, as I've started writing this book, you're going to get into the point where you're going to have to do a lot of he said, she said. You got to distinguish which part of your character, which character is talking, who's not talking, who's doing the movements. So you're going to have to do this. And this, I found a unique way to do this because my first book, I actually, I use, I can't, I can count, uh, I can't count how many times I use the word he said, she said, or my so-and-so said. And as I, I sent it to my editor, my first book, and my feedback was, hey, I get it. It works, but you need to learn how to use your words a little bit more carefully. Or you don't want to be so redundant using he said, she said, um, he stammered, he stuttered, he shunned, he responded, he answered, she answered, she cried, she laughed. You want to make sure that you are using different ways to announce who's the, who's doing the talking. If you don't do that, it, it brings no suspicion, no type of creativity. You want to bring creativity. So you're going to have to use these words. You're going to have to get a little bit of creative in how you use your dialogue between in between characters, which is fun because most readers love dialogue between characters. So when you're doing your story building and you're building your story, you want to make sure that you are inserting dialogue here and there. If you're not doing that, the reader will get bored and slam your book and put it down. So make sure you are being creative Make sure you're using those adverbs. And if you made it to this end of this video and you know that I just finished chapter two and you know that I'm still writing, I want you to type in the comments, do what writers do, write. If you're writing this book with me or, you write, or you're gonna start writing this book and you're just watching me um, get through my chapters as I speak, give me a comment, leave a comment, drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know what exactly would you like me to talk about. I have a a lot of experience in writing so i don't know what you guys are wanting or what you guys really know i'm just going as i see fit and i go from what i've learned and I, my job is to simply pass it on to you guys because i've simply done it and i spent a lot of money with editors so i'm gonna do this as a benefactor as you as you can say um, to you guys and give you this information that I already have done obtained because I've already done it. So with that being said, like this video and subscribe, especially if you like content like this, where I'm going to be showing you how to start projects and finish them. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But bye as Lewis again, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see y'all later.